It's always my pleasure to be able to honor the firefighters and the fire department, and uh, uh, we work together a lot in the foundation that I'm involved with, and uh, uh, it's, it's a real pleasure to have you men and women with us today. Uh, it's my pleasure also to introduce Chief Braun, and, and I've given probably the same speech over years, over years, over years. Uh, he, he came to Cincinnati as our fire chief in 2011 after spending 36 years in, in Columbus. <laughs> <laughs> so he finally found the right place to live. <clears throat> uh, in his short tenure, he's, he's done a lot in the department. He's reorganized the department from top to bottom. He's created EMS structures, uh, increased the number of paramedics uh, in, involved within the city. Uh, he's worked with the city administration to reduce and try to eliminate brownouts due to budget cuts. And he's one of the things that I've noticed most in visiting firehouses, he has dramatically improved the morale of the fire department and is generally very well received. One of the things that you all may not know, of course we give him a check every year, but he's given more money back to us than we've given to him, which is a pretty neat deal. In the past two years, for Believe to Achieve, uh, he's uh, uh, been willing to auction himself off for a day with the fire chief uh, this past year, I think the uh, winning bid was $3,000 for that. We also had a, a dinner with the firehouse, which was for a, a family of uh, up to three children, uh, husband and wife, and uh, uh, I think there was somewhere over $1,000, I think, was raised for that particular one this year. So he's, he's responsible for four grand to believe to achieve. So I think that's worth <laughs> But uh, I've, I've had a pleasure of working with him since he's been here. Uh, I'm involved with the uh, Fire Foundation, Cincinnati Fire Foundation, and through the relationship that he and I have had, we've really been able to make this thing grow. So it's my pleasure to welcome Chief Brock. Uh, it's pretty exciting to get to spend the day with me. I come in and I have breakfast and I take my nap at one. So. <laughs> And then it's time to go home or I'm on overtime, so that, that's why everybody likes to do that. Um, and it did take me 37, I call it 37 years in training in Columbus before I could get a real job and uh, come down to Cincinnati. My wife and I retired and our plan was to go to Florida. We didn't quite make it. We did go south and we did hit water and then we stayed. So, um, but, it, but it's been fun. Uh, we do have, we have a video also, it's not quite as long as the previous one, <laughs> so, but if we could show the video please. Report of a one alarm fire, this is for engine 14, engine 3, engine 29, safety engine 21, truck 19, truck 21, RAS 23, District 2, District 3, Medic 3, Heavy Rescue 14, ALS 32, and SO2, your fire ground is command.
on behalf of the men and women of the Cincinnati Fire Department, uh, I would like to thank the Rotary for having us again this year. This is one of the highlights of our year. Uh, we look forward to coming and uh, breaking bread with you and enjoying the afternoon and uh, helping us to honor some of our members that uh, have stood out throughout the year. The film you saw, by the way, those were all fires that's happened since January. So that's what we've been doing for the past five months is what you saw a little bit of what you see on that video. Um, someone asked earlier if, if I said, yeah, we, we put a video together. Actually, I did absolutely nothing with the video. Um, but Tim Baer, who's up there with our camera, uh, put those together for us and did a wonderful job. Uh, my job was just to watch it, so it was just wonderful. <laughs> our first award is a self-improvement award. This is given to Deputy Ch or District Chief Mark Monahan. District Chief uh, Mark Monahan is receiving the self-improvement award for pursuing and obtaining his master's degree in public administration. District Chief Monaghan is a 26-year veteran of the Cincinnati Fire Department. Five years after joining the department, he promoted to fire apparatus operator, followed by promotions to lieutenant, captain, and then district chief. He served as president of the Cincinnati Firefighters Union Local 48 for six years. In Cincinnati, he worked with the city administration to avoid layoffs, increased union membership to 100%, and played a major role in acquiring office spaces and meeting halls for Local 48. Most recently, he was served as District Chief in Risk Management. Just a few years ago, District Chief Monahan obtained a Bachelor's Degree in Fire Science, followed that with the pursuit of a Master's Degree in Public Administration, tied in naturally with his experience and background in working with the Union and City Administration. In addition to his work responsibilities and duties as a husband and father, D.C. Monahan spent time taking courses over a two-year period to obtain this degree. D.C.'s Monahan's focus and hard work has a testament to his dedication and self-improvement. District Chief Mark Monahan. Thanks everybody, I appreciate it. Um, I've been lucky enough to be a, a guest here for several years. Uh, it's an honor to be a recipient of one of the awards. Um, also like to thank my uh, family who's here, my wife Vicki, my oldest daughter Samantha, who uh, will be entering the business uh, world here shortly. She's a sophomore in the, uh, in the UC Lindner Business Program studying accounting. And then my youngest daughter Sarah, who will be joining her sister Samantha at, at UC next year. Also like to thank the city for their support and the fire department for their support um, to get this degree. Um, we've had a small tuition reimbursement budget of $14,000 up until a couple years ago that got raised to 35,000 so that's split up between the 850 members that would like to improve themselves so hopefully we can do some more work there and uh, but again I appreciate it and and thank you for the opportunity. Our next award is the Administrative Award, given to District Chief Thomas Laycamp. District Chief Thomas Laycamp is receiving the Administrative Award for his effort and dedication serving as a commander in charge of overseeing the coordination of services for FAO Daryl Gordon's funeral. D.C. Laycamp is a 27-year veteran of the Cincinnati Fire Department. Five years after joining, he promoted to lieutenant, followed by promotions to captain and district chief. He is currently the District Chief in charge of Special Operation, which includes the Bomb Squad, Hazmat Team, and Heavy Rescue Operations. When the CFD family suffered a tragic loss earlier this year, it made sense to make District Chief Laycamp one of the funeral commanders. He had prior experience with coordination of an event of this gravity. A member of the Coal Rain Fire Department described District Chief Laycamp as instrumental in the days following the loss of two of their members in 2008. Working alongside hundreds of his fellow firefighters, District Chief Laycamp oversaw the coordination of arrangements in a matter of six days. CFD hosted thousands of people, including visiting fire departments, residents of Cincinnati, and people from all over the country who came to show support. 
Communication and collaboration took place between FAO Gordon's family, numerous city agency, the news media, the Columbus Division of Fire, the funeral home, and multiple other fire departments, just to name a few. District Chief Camp put in countless hours to make sure every detail was arranged. Like anything the fire department does, this was a team effort, and District Chief Camp served in his role very well to see it through. District Chief Camp's organizational skills and dedication to fulfilling his role as a funeral commander demonstrates his strength in the administration of such a huge undertaking during a time of great loss. At this time, I'd like to bring Barry back up and has a few other words to say. Uh, when we were getting the program put together, I got an email from Doug Adams, and he said, uh, you know, I see that uh, Chief Camp's going to be honored. He says, I'd like you to say a few words about how he and I, meaning uh, the Doug, worked together on a campaign for the sight in the dark, which if you recall, uh, 12 years ago, uh, $256,000 was raised uh, by Doug and the Lake Camp and uh, the Rotary Club to buy thermal imaging cameras to put on every fire truck in the city. And I'll just read for you a couple, a uh, few words here that uh, were related uh, by Doug to me. He says, it's been 12 years since we completed the campaign for Sight of the Dark, which raised $276,000 to purchase, purchase thermal imaging cameras for each engine and truck of the Cincinnati Fire Department. During that fundraising effort, I could not have reached the results I did not, had it not been for uh, assistance of Tom Laycamp. From leading demonstration events with key executives to attending presentations to assisting with the fundraising efforts, Tom and I work closely every step of the way. He is a true professional with deep love and respect for his fellow firefighters. His efforts in equipping each truck and engine with thermal imaging cameras saved many firefighters and citizens' lives in the greater Cincinnati area over the past 12 years, and I have the utmost respect for Tom and his passion for the Cincinnati Fire Department. So that was one Rotarian's uh, direct relationship and thoughts about Tom. Chief Lake Camp cannot be here today. He's on the West Coast, uh, continuing his education to uh, further his skills to uh, help lead our department. Uh, he's in the prestigious uh, Naval program uh, to get his master's and they take very few people. He's out there with FBI agents and uh, naval personnel and uh, different members from around the country. Uh, but accepting his award is his daughter, Emily. I'm truly honored to be accepting this award on, on behalf of my father, who has poured so much of his heart into this department. Seeing his perseverance and fortitude, despite the heartache he felt after losing a friend and fellow brother, was nothing short of inspiring to my family and myself. While he has prepared some words in acceptance and thanks for this award, I would like to extend a personal thank you from my family for taking the time to recognize a man we proudly get to call dad. He states, I apologize for being unable to attend this great event and I want you all to know how much I appreciate the Rotary recognizing Cincinnati firefighters each year. While I'm very appreciative of this recognition, there are many Cincinnati firefighters who work tirelessly to provide Daryl with a final tribute. All of us wish we didn't have to do it and pray that we never have to do it again. Thank you very much for this recognition. Well, I'm glad I brought my hanky. <laughs> that was very touching. Your dad would be very proud. Our next award is a community service award given to FAO Gregory Hissett. Fire apparatus operator Gregory Hissett is receiving the community service award for his efforts in organizing an annual event at Station 19. This event pairs local children diagnosed with Down syndrome with a firefighter to spend time at the firehouse and attend a Reds game. FAO Hissett was connected to the Down Syndrome Association of Greater Cincinnati 
when he and his wife learned their daughter had Down syndrome during his wife's pregnancy. Not only did they utilize the resources available from this organization, but they chose to give back to the Down syndrome community. FAO Hissett's wife co-leads the West Side group of the organization, and his family participates annually in the Buddy Walk. For the 2015 walk alone, their team raised over $6,500. They placed 11th in fundraising out of approximately 280 teams. FAO Hissett also chose to get this, his CFD family at Station 19 involved. For the past two years, he and his fellow firefighters have taken children with Down syndrome to the Cincinnati Reds Firefighter Appreciation Night. The children and their parents tour the station, eat pizza, try on gear, and attend the Reds game with their firefighter friends. This is great fun for them, but it also helps these children who may have cognitive delays learn what firefighters look and sound like with their gear, vehicles, and equipment. The hope is they will be comfortable and recognize firefighters as helpers if they are ever in an emergency situation requiring fire company response. In addition to this event, FAO Hissett has also organized a CPR class at Down Syndrome Association of Greater Cincinnati Offices for adults involved with the organization. He provides disc jockey services for local Girl Scout events, parent-child banquets, events for St. Rita School for the Deaf, and a middle school dance at Three Rivers Middle School. He helps announce the girls' basketball tournament at Our Lady of Visitation. Annually, he visits his daughter's preschool with all of his firefighting equipment to give a fire safety talk. FAO Hissett's commitment of time and resources to help local children embody the spirit of community service. And would you please come forward too? For his wife and Greg would come forward for your award, please. Thank you. This is my first experience with the Rotary Club, so I am truly grateful for the, um, for the recognition and the ability to stand up here and talk about Down syndrome and have the chief talk about Down syndrome. And briefly, I want to mention my mom. Uh, she's sitting right here. Raise your hand. She's the one who, of course, who, <laughs> she's the one who instilled uh, core family values and, of course, my wife. Uh, Shelly, who allows me to continue with uh, some of the things that I like to do as far as community service. But, uh, you know, we're standing up here together receiving this award, but make no mistake, this is not about a single person. This is our firehouse that comes together, and it's, it's more than just one person. So there are many people involved in the, uh, in the activities that we coordinate and that we get together. So on behalf of all of them, uh, we really appreciate it, and thank you. My wife and I have had the pleasure of going uh, to the station the past couple of years. They just told me three things, pizza, ball game, and firehouse, and I was there, so. <laughs> Our last award is given to firefighter Michael Gundrum. He's receiving the Bravery and Valor Award for his response to an incident while off duty April 9th, 2015. On that day, firefighter Gundrum was enjoying time with his family at Finley Market. He heard some commotion and became aware of a potential medical emergency. He found an adult male whose arm was trapped in an industrial meat mixer grinder. Ooh. Without hesitation, firefighter Gundrum identified himself as an off-duty paramedic. He ensured 911 had been contacted and began to take control of the scene. Without any equipment or personal protection, he extricated the patient's arm and began assessment and treatment. He fashioned a makeshift tourniquet using towels and kept the patient calm until the engine company and medic unit had arrived. Members of the responding company remarked later how well the scene was managed by Firefighter Gundrum. This was attributed to his calm, caring, and professional demeanor. A doctor happened to be riding with the advanced life support supervisor who responded to the scene that day. 
The doctor transported the patient with the medic unit and later stated surgery uncovered the fact that every artery in the patient's arm had been lacerated. While the fire company and medic unit responded quickly, the injuries were severe enough that would have proven fatal if Firefighter Gundrum had not been present and quick to act. Firefighter Gundrum remained with the patient through the entire incident and even asked if he could be released after the patient was loaded into the medic unit. Although he feels his actions were commonplace, he responded without hesitation while off duty to severely injured patient without personal protection and managed the scene and until additional help arrived. Firefighter Gundrum's quick and decisive response that day truly exemplifies bravery and valor in action. Firefighter Gundrum. So this is not normal for me. Um, first off, I'd like to thank uh, Chief Brown and administration for their support and all this. Uh, to the Rotary Club for putting uh, this day on for us. Um, I know I can say with uh, all confidence that uh, none of us get into this job for the recognition. Um, and it is very much a team effort. Uh, it's been mentioned more than once today um, how much of a family we are. Um, both on and off duty. Um, I consider every one of them my brothers. Um, speaking of family, <laughs> I thank my wife and my, my dad for being here today. Uh, both my kids were with me and we gave them the opportunity to come and my daughter says, no, nah, I'm all right. My son, <laughs> son said, well, I'd like to meet the fire chief. And I said, well, you, you met the fire chief when we were at opening day. He's like, oh, well, then I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, you know, we all wear, you know, our uniform, some every day, some every third day. And um, whether that uniform is on or not, I truly believe that every one of us are here to make a difference. Um, you know, had things gone different, I don't think I'd have done anything different. Um, and I just really appreciate um, all, of, all the work that we do day in and day out to make a difference in our community. And thank you for recognizing me. I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize some people in the audience uh, from the department. Uh, we have two of our assistant chiefs, Chief DeMossi and Chief Winston, if you'd stand, please. Uh, Chief Prather, would you please stand? You've already heard John sing. John? I threaten John, I tell him if he doesn't sing, I will, and that brings Rosie back to mind when she sang, so he, he shows up for all of these. Um, also, would our administrative staff, our civilian personnel, stand up, please? With our civilian staff, uh, firefighters, as, as you've seen today, um, there's a common thread that runs through them. Uh, I usually end most of my speeches when I talk to the firefighters with we keep three things in our priorities, our faith, our family, and then the Cincinnati Fire Department. And you can see that here today. They all recognize their families. They all have the faith. That's where they get their moral compass to do the right thing. And when those two are lined up perfectly, then they do the jobs that they do and give back to the community the way they do. Um, our civilian employees, are the same way as our firefighters are. They have the same characteristics as the uniform people. That's why we get along and can function as well as we do with their help and, and their guidance and their prodding so we do the right thing. And, and we truly, truly appreciate the, the job they do. Chief Smith's coming in the door. What do you think? <laughs> uh, 
Chief Smith is uh, one that's in charge of our training. He takes care of all those paramedic, paramedics, the recruits, and every aspect of training he's responsible for. But we are a family in the fire department. We had a terrible loss this year, um, and we, we come back from it. Uh, we get together uh, in the stations, and it's one of those things that, as you could see in the film, being a firefighter is a very, very dangerous job. And it's something that we put in the back of our minds. You can't have it out in front, or you wouldn't do what we do day in and day out. When something like this happens, it comes back to the front of your mind. And you know that my job is dangerous. And as I said last week at our memorial service, um, firefighters, we don't get a chance, a second chance at things. We have to do it right the first time. We have to be on our game continually. And unlike ball players who get paid millions of dollars to catch a football and dance in the end zone at the, at the, with 50,000 people applauding and screaming, we come out of these buildings after saving lives and, and dust ourselves off and get ready for the next one. And the only thing that you have is the, the inner self-satisfaction that you helped your community. And as you heard, every one of the speakers we brought up today that received their awards, and, and including Emily, uh, they spoke of community because that's what being a firefighter is all about. You don't get rich by being a firefighter. Chances of you living a long life is very slim. But we do it because we love our fellow citizens and we love our community and we want to make our community a better place. Most of the time when you would build a community, one of the first buildings they build is a firehouse. And the firehouses were community buildings and it's where people would gather and we still look at that today and our doors are open for everyone. Um, we love our families. There is nothing like our families. It's a hard time for me now. My wife isn't here. She's home because our brother, my brother-in-law, her brother, retired firefighter, just got uh, diagnosed with uh, pancreatic cancer. If you've been reading the paper, you've known that the state is passing a law for firefighters because of the cancer. Pancreatic cancer, firefighters get more pancreatic cancer and, and other types of cancer uh, than other people. So here's a man relatively young in his early 60s that the prognosis with pancreatic cancer is not very good. So we together gather together as a community and he has paramedics in Columbus where he retired from, take him to the hospital every week for his chemo. And when it's bad and after the chemo, the medics pick him up and take him back to the hospital, the emergency room, uh, because that's what we do. We are a family, we love each other, we take care of each other and because we do that, we can take care of you. God bless and thank you very much.